Greetings everyone, we are the team Unbounded and now we are presenting our solution. To state RIS configuring using a linear model and optimization using genetic algorithm. Our team is formed by the Professor Marcelo Carvalho from the University of Brasilia, I, Gustavo Penido, Yandre Tomasi, and Rodrigo Fischer. We thank the judge and all the organizers, especially the IEEE and the Signal Process Society for contributing to the education of the undergraduate and graduate students by proposing this competition. Now, we will start for the channel estimation. For the channel estimation, we based our development in the question 2 from the description file, where the signal received in the frequency domain is a result of the transmitted signal element-wise multiplicated with the channel plus the noise. Thus, we can approximate the channel matrix H as follows. We inverted the Fourier operation and divided the result by the transmitted signal, which is equal to the all four subcarriers. Greetings, I am Rodrigo and I will be talking about the IRS modeling. We started off with the model used by Emil et al. The channel is a linear time invariant system and this model doesn't consider mutual coupling between the elements. Considering the PAM transmission using the sync pulse, we have the following expression. We can group some elements of the sums that we don't need to separate into these new terms. Note that the reflection parameters gamma and tau of each element can be different, even given the same configuration theta. This accounts for the differences between the elements' hardware. The takeaway here is that since we only have two states, we can rewrite this expression and obtain an expression linear in theta n. The geometric interpretation of this result is that we can switch between two different channel responses from the same element by using the average vector of these two responses and another vector that can either be summed or subtracted in order to perform this switching. Now to the channel modeling. We identified that the pilots from dataset 1 are divided in four blocks, P1, P2, P3, and P4. We noted that P3 and P4 is just a permutation of P1, P2, which allows us to estimate the noise power in zero with the following formula. Then we now ask the question, what model was simulated? We can estimate C0 by exploiting the pilot structure of dataset 1. When we sum the samples relative to block 1 and block 2, we would get only the constant C0, since the thetas have alternate sign. When we subtract these samples, we would cancel C0 and only obtain the first order terms. In practice, we see that there are other even order terms other than C0 because we see that this graph here is not a constant, probably due to mutual coupling and or other hardware impairment. We therefore add a term E theta K that counts for higher order terms. When analyzing the data, there were hints of spatial correlation. A linear regression was performed in data set 1 and showed high correlation between the coefficients, as shown here. We then simplified our model by summing the thetas in a same column of the reshaped configuration matrix and obtained this simplified model. Spatial correlation between the elements is expected and each column of the reshaped matrix is probably a subsurface of the larger surface. We have shown empirically that theta j is equal to zero for every configuration but the first 64. This explains why we have peaks on the first 64 configurations and only higher order terms afterwards. The first 64 configurations are vertical configurations where each element in the subsurface is configured in the same way. Now, in order to cancel the effect of the higher order terms, we noted a periodic behavior of these terms. In every 1024 configurations, the pattern seems to repeat. We call each period a subblock. This means that we can estimate E theta k for the first 64 configurations by observing the corresponding configurations in other subblocks. This is illustrated in this graph, where we compare the first 64 values of the higher order terms for the four different subblocks, and we show that they in fact are pretty close. 
we now go to parameter estimation. Then, the first step towards the parameter estimation is to calculate C0 as the simple average of the channel samples for all N configurations. Next, since the last three sub-blocks only contain higher order terms, we average these samples in order to estimate E, theta k for the first 64 configurations. Lastly, we discount the constant term and the higher order term, leaving the estimate for the linear term, which allows us to obtain the coefficient C by performing a simple matrix inversion. Now I'll talk about rate optimization. The rate optimization was implemented using two different algorithms. The first one is the modified STM, and the second one is the genetic algorithm. By performing the parameter estimation described before, we get the following coefficients. We do not show C0 here. The orange circles are for n-loss users and the blue triangles are for loss users. STM tries to align all these coefficients in the direction of C0. In the modified STM algorithm, we maximize in n d different directions, including the one of C0, and for every tab k. Then, we choose the direction and tab whose configuration yielded the best rate. This is more computationally expensive than selecting the strongest tab, but we decided to do it this way since we wanted the best rate. Hello, I'm Yandra Tomasi. I'm going to talk about our second optimization method, the genetic algorithm. In summary, the implemented genetic algorithm has a fixed workflow. A population of 4,096 individuals was used, being the initial population for each user made of the 100 best STM solutions and by randomly generated individuals. The fitness function is an objective function used to guide the genetic algorithm simulations towards an optimal design solution. In this work, the fitness function is the normalized rate, and the goal was to improve the results achieved using the modified STM algorithm. The selection defines how the chromosomes that participate in the generation of the new population are selected. In this work, one of the couples is formed by the fittest individuals and the others are chosen by the roulette wheel with elitism. The elitism was applied to the roulette by determining that only the 1,024 fittest individuals could reproduce. In this method, the couples are formed by a process that is conceptually the same as spinning in one arm the roulette wheel being the sizes of the holes, the reflection of the selection probabilities. The probability is proportional to the individual's fitness function fi. So the better the solution, the higher are its chances to form the offspring. The crossover is a genetic operator used to combine the genetic information of two parents to generate two children. They are formed by firstly applying the crossover operator with a probability of occurrence. In this work, the probability was 80%. The inversion is a genetic operator that allows the positioning of each genetic information to evolve. It is used to reorder the information between two different and randomly chosen points. In this work, it was applied with 30% probability of occurrence. There is also the genetic operator called mutation, and it is used to introduce genetic diversity into the population. It has a small probability of occurrence for each genetic value. In this work, the mutation probability was of 1%. The elitism is a strategy used after the selection to keep the two best individuals from the previous generation, which is useful to improve the convergence speed. In this work, the criteria to stop the algorithm and return the solution was the number of generations. It was enough for the rate to stabilize to execute the algorithm for 35 generations in the worst case scenario. And finally, let's finish up this presentation with a brief performance analysis. To the performance analysis, we use the upper bound proposed by Emil for the comparisons that follow. Here, the percentage of the upper bound achieved and the estimated SNR for each user are shown. The N-loss users achieve between 75 to 80% of the upper bound, and the loss users achieve around 90% of the upper bound, with two outlier users. That brings us to the end of the presentation. Here are the main references used to develop our solution. We, the Unbounded team, would like to thank you all for your time and attention.